What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're actually gonna be doing something really fun. And we're going to be uh, trying to write a track from scratch using completely free uh, sample libraries. So uh, this is something I've always wanted to do to see how far we can get. And the ones I've picked up um, and that we're going to use in the video are from Project Sam's Free Orchestra. So that's kind of taken from their Symphobia series and uh, True Strike, as you can see. I've basically selected a handful of the ones I wanted. They actually have, I think, 12 um, patches in total from the Free Orchestra. I've selected uh, how many, like seven or so uh, to use. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight, right? Um, these are all the possible ones I, I, I consider using. I just downloaded it from their website. Uh, so in addition to that, I have orchestral tools layers as well. And that is kind of their free library hosted in their sign player. So that's layers right there, uh, which is kind of like a an orchestral library specializing in pads and chords. So um, if, you, if you're familiar with CineSample, CineOrc, it's that kind of thing. Um, and then spit some Spitfire Labs. Um, I pulled up the drums and the soft piano by default. So they have synth, they have vocals, they have, um, you know, strings and all that good stuff. So anyway, let's get right on to it and see what we can do. So I'm thinking we can do something with a um, kind of like a cinematic uh, trailer type of feel to it. So something kind of repetitive, let's see. So this is the bombastic basis. It's like a combination of, uh, let me leave the contact instance open actually, so we can see what we're playing with here. That's it right here. So you hear brass, you hear low strings, you hear a piano there as well. So let's give this a go here. Oops. Okay, first of all, let's quantize that. Oops, there we go. So in Logic, that's just a Q, by the way. Now this is velocity sensitive, so you'll see that the, the red ones um, are basically the really hard velocities that I press down really hard. So it includes that brass stab in there. The lower ones just have the, um, just the strings basically, and the piano. Well, now here, let me see. Here, let's let, instead of that, let's do this. There we go. Something a little bit different to give it a little bit of variety. And then let's loop this actually. So we'll loop it a few times. Let's just say up to there. Okay, cool. Um, let's go with a melody right away. So let's, in this case, let's use the heroic horns. So there we go. Now you'll see that these horns are basically, they're like marcato samples. It's, it's not really sustains. So in this case, you'd kind of have to um, make do with what you have there. Um, I could probably substitute in the orchestral tools layers for it because they have a dedicated brass patch. But um, for me, this, this is fine, you know? So let's quantize that a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's speed up the tempo a bit. If I want it to be an aggre uh, kind of an aggressive trailer track, it should be a little faster. There we go. This will probably help the horns as well. 
because they're a little bit uh, shorter in nature. So I don't want them to fade so quickly. If I let go a little bit early, um, the the room sound kind of cuts off with it as well. So that's something I would have to put a reverb plug-in or something to bring out that room sound in it. Um, right now, it sounds like a little bit of a sucking effect, so it doesn't really sound that realistic. But maybe I can hold this F a little bit longer. Let's like that. And again, I can shorten that F because I want a dun dun instead of a dun dun. I don't want that one kind of slurred. So cool. All right, as a basic skeleton, that's not bad. Let's see what we got here. Power strike. So we got a bunch of perk here. So they actually tell us at the bottom what these are. So Grand Casa, Soft Dynamics, Full Dynamics, uh, Snare Ensemble, Tom Tom, Roto Tom, Beat Trim, Symbol, Bo China Symbol. Okay, so good variety of stuff. All right, so let's give this a go. Set up this basic pattern here. Toms do I have? So I'll have the A going down to the G. It's A going down to the G there. Because I wanted two tom sounds, I wanted a higher one going down to a lower one, so. And then here I can put a crash symbol hit, because that's the um, big downbeat. So there we go. And then actually, let's loop this guy as well. Actually, you know what? Let me do that and then loop. Actually, you know what? Because I want that symbol hit, I'll have to put him in manually and then loop it from there. So let's duplicate this hit. Find the symbol. There it is. So now I can um, do that and then extend just like that. <clears throat> okay, let's hear it. Let's add some um, short strings in here. So these actually go pretty high. It goes like all the way up to the, um, let's see the range, keyboard range. So you see here, violin range all the way down to double bass range. So let's think of something here. I'm, I'm thinking of an ostinato type of thing, by the way. So first half of the intro, something to build more dynamics. Let's see. 
See what that sounds like. Move that all over a little bit here. Let's change this a little bit. So I like the I like the syncopation of this E because it's like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so this middle short note this one as well you can see it's literally in between the strong beats so um, it gives a little bit of a anticipating of a you know feeling and you can see this arc here I like it when I when the music has these certain arcs up and then now this basically just is just matching what the basses are doing uh the shape of um dun 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 this is going up like two octaves higher so i'm going to actually um take this and loop that as well so that's another part of my basic skeleton okay let's see what orchestral bursts sound like so really good as an ending or as a very beginning. So I don't think I need it right now, actually. I'm gonna leave it. I've also pulled up Funny Moment, which is from their um, animator series. Kind of cool. And then they have their Uh, trumpet thing and, and then you have a choir from Lumina Let's see if I can bring it up just a little bit now you hear the choir there I, I'm still holding the notes so they fade out on their own um, so again that has to be timed pretty well that's the thing about like some of these patches, like the heroic horns, um, the choir. They give you a taste of what the full package is like, but they don't actually give you the full sustain. So in order to get that, you'd have to invest in there. Uh, I could either orchestral essentials um, or the full symphobia. But you know, this is mainly for the tone and adding the, a bit of extra icing in, into your music. So let's save that. I'm I'm happy with uh, what I have here at the very beginning. Um, I kind of want to add some drums though. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's add it. Um... well okay so let's quantize that a little bit this one I can maybe put at like 90 or something because I don't want it to sound too uh, robotic so quantizing is just the amount of um, like basically how locked in each MIDI note is to the grid so if if you played it quite off time for example like I just did um, then you can press quantize and it'll automatically uh, drag itself to the nearest uh, point uh, on the grid, so 
This one, I just got that, um, <laughs> I got the idea to have that cymbal hit there on the fly, so I didn't really hit it as hard as I wanted to. Have that kick on an offbeat. Yeah! See, that's one of those happy accidents I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I love those. Okay, now, I like that pattern, but I, in order to increase the intensity even more, by the way, I think I'm going to end that phrase, the first idea there. Now I'm going to uh, double the hi hats. So double the amount, I mean. So I'm gonna go in the middle, oops, go right there, and then do that. To make it a little less obtrusive, I'm just gonna bring down the velocity of everything. here. So let me add some comps just before this final kick hit there. Not very in time, but let's see what we can, how we can line it up. Yeah, not bad. All right, great. And this will be the end of my kind of bombastic section. Then I'm going to do a section that's a little bit uh, quieter, and I'm going to use some of these other instruments for that. So let's hear this one more time and see what we got. So, you know, the basses and the power strike uh, percussion are doing the heavy lifting. Then now we have this little ostinato to add on top. The melody comes in. By the way, all of these free patches have controls. double this I mean let's repeat this melody now because I kind of like it it's it's simple it's simple um it because right now we're in uh, G natural minor you know because so that's evidenced by the F here F natural uh, so we have an F going up to G if it was harmonic minor we'd have F sharp going up to G uh, but a natural minor creates this kind of um noble sound in my opinion harmonic is a little bit stronger it's a little more intentful, but natural is a little more pulled back, right? So um, natural the, coming from uh, its relative major, B flat major, having the exact same uh, key signature. So anyway. Now, because this is the second time of the melody, let's actually make, um, let's see. Mm, I was thinking of having da 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 play the first time right here. Dun, dun, dun. Let's do that actually. So let's pull this over. Pull that over there. So let's see. I'm gonna extend this a little longer. So this one I'll have to change. The second time if I repeat the same thing, it's gonna sound very repetitive. So dun dun, dun 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 Oh, let's do that. So bring it up a little bit, bring it up a little more. So still diatonic. And now instead of going to the third of the G minor chord, I'm going to the fifth. So you're going to the, the top of that um, G minor triad. actually bring these back a little bit because these are it feels like it's coming in a bit late
just a little bit. And I'll do that this uh, kind of the same thing here. Felt it was a little bit too short. And then what did I do before? I kind of brought this back a little bit, so I'll do that as well. Cool, all right. And now, because I said this is going into a new section, I wanna add um, a little bit of suspense. So I wanna build just a little more. So let's see. Actually, I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna add some high strings. So this is the Project Sam Sordino strings. Just a really nice sound there. So again, this, this kind of breathiness adds a bit of suspense. Okay, cool. Now let's really pull back on the mood here. Let's, let's make it a little calmer. So, all, all the free orchestra stuff is relatively bombastic, except for, you know, the choir um, and the Sardino violins. So we might use those in a second, but let's pull up OT's layers and see what this sounds like. So I'm thinking the chord progression could probably be four. So minor four, which is C minor going to the one, and then maybe four again to five. So something very simple here. Uh, this is major chords, so let me go to minor chords. So that's a second inversion. Let's go with this. That's a little quiet, and I wonder if I can bring up the volume a little bit. Okay, there we go. So let's 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 do this here. Actually, let me do that again and then I'll add the key switch after. Last chord's definitely gonna be a major chord. First, let me just quantize this. Bring that over. There we go. Three, four. So that's fine, D minor there. It still gets that sad sound, you know? <laughs> It's a little early. Back to the one chord. Now I'm, I was hearing an A major chord, um, kind of like a secondary dominant. But this one definitely, I'm gonna put in a key switch to make it a major. So let me just record that in. There you go. So you can see here, basically I have the key switches set up so that C0 are the major chords. Now by default, in the current version of the sign player, the key switches are actually set up at C, like all the all these are at negative two. No, I don't want it, what? Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, so basically I, I pulled up the key switch range so that they're at zero. So I can very easily press them at the bottom of my keyboard and they're not below the keyboard range. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and that, that that's just the pads, by the way. So there's also the, um, staccato, if you want. Uh, so I could have played in the staccato. Like the library just sounds great, by the way. But in this case, because we're doing kind of a softer part, let's go with a uh, patty, 
pad type of function. Now I'm gonna put another key switch here just for the minor. There we go. Now the modulation was a bit wonky there at the beginning, so I'm gonna make sure the mod wheel is set appropriately. Yeah, see it's a bit, it's uh, maybe I could even start it a bit earlier. So let's actually have this go down a bit. Have a, I mean, this is where modulation is pretty important. If you have these long sustain chords, then you need um, crescendos, decrescendos. Let's make that go down a little bit. And this just keeps on going up. There we go. Let's actually, okay, let's bring this key switch back, actually, because I like the A major sound instead of the A minor. Perfect, okay. <clears throat> now here, let, let's add in the choir to go on top of that pad. Ah, it only goes up to the C above middle C. Okay, that's fine. As the choir fades out, the orchestra swells in, so. Just check that. Okay, now it layers is a touch loud, so let's bring that down a bit. Let's see. Just have that A come in there. second half of this choir melody let's also have the strings come in again to make that build up so again I got to fix that modulation so it's kind of start a little bit lower, right? Oops. So let me change the key switch back to uh, minor there. Okay. Yeah, in this case, it's okay if the modulation is just one direction. As long as it's slanting up or down, there's some sort of motion in it. So um, there we go. Okay. Um, and then I kind of want to add an orchestral burst when I go back into this. So let's see if I can copy and do this. There we go. <coughs> Maybe I'll, um, I'll just do this. And then I'll pull this back because now now we don't need an intro anymore, right? So let's see if I'll bring the drums back to there. And I can take away this quiet part because we're not really doing that. Actually, I'll put this Sordino back in there. Cool. All right. So then this will bring it home. Great. All right. So again, I took out the intro because I don't need it anymore. I just finished the quiet section. So now I'm going back into the bombastic section and maybe I can add a burst to kind of introduce, reintroduce that. That sounds good. Two, three, four. And then I'll add just 
one more burst. Uh, I'll just copy and paste it for this one, just for an extra impact there. Perfect. Um, cool. All right. What else can I add? Oh, I wanted to do a uh, the piano, of course. Wrong chord progression. <laughs> Sorry. So C minor. Right, okay, I'm going four, one, four, five. So here, going back into the main section, I'll probably have some kind of, um, let's see. Okay, you know what? Let's do the toms in the labs drums plus the toms in the um, power strike drums. So we'll have this, this layering, this extra impact. One, two, three. Okay, so quickly quantize. Sounds slightly cheesy, but whatever. <laughs> um, where are you? There you go. Now, I actually pretty like the balance between the lap drums and the uh, the cinematic drums because these are super, super wet. Like in terms of reverb, there's a lot of reverb on these. So I'm just going to uh, layer them with the lap drums so they complement each other pretty well because the labs is quite dry. So you get this middle ground. You can hear that. So quantize that. And then here I'm going to need my crash symbol. There we go. And then also, actually, why don't I just, yeah, let's just um, do the quick one here. So with the double hi hats there. You know what? Why not right off the bat? Let's add a bit of reverb to this because it's a little bit dry for my taste. So let's pull it back to maybe 20% 20, 20 or so. That's it. Drum set is also a touch loud. And you know what? Just to end this off, I'm going to do this. Yeah, kind of like that. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah. And then... Hmm. Maybe I can layer in an octave above with the... With the um, I'll do it that. Ooh, hang on. That one's coming in a bit late. Oops. Dun dun. You know what? And that will do. Hmm. What can I have? Oh. Eh, that's a little too serious still. I kind of want to end this comically, so. 
I'll do a short strings. And then in addition to that, I'll just add in the uh, Alright, I think we pretty much got it, and I think I ended up using, yeah, I used up all my all my tracks that I laid out. So let's hear, let's have a listen to everything and see what we can pull from it. So we start off with the free orchestra, you know, establish this kind of cinematic feel to it. And we get this string ostinato that carries on. Touch low in the mix, so I might bring that up just a little bit. The short strings are really loud. Here I should have the cymbal hit. Where is it? There we go. Just end that section. So now we have this quiet section, right? A little calm. And if I wanted to make it extra cinematic on this second half of the return, I'd probably add a bit in choir to just to pad it out. Okay, I have to make sure I get the level right here. There we go. So, uh, you know, relatively, this is still a pretty simple uh, piece in terms of the tracks used. It's, you know, 11 tracks in total, but you already get um, a pretty good skeleton, like a pretty good sketch uh, just from using these free libraries. And I specifically use ones that um, have a very good sound quality to them already, so it doesn't sound cheap and plastic. And if you really wanted to take the time to dive really deep into it and, um, you know, play around with the sound design and everything, you could probably get an even better result than this. But, um, you know, I wanted to see how quickly we could get something out in how much? Oh, about 40 minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's not that short, but you get the idea, right? So uh, just to recap, I used the Project Sam Free Orchestra. Again, there's like 12 different patches that they um, pulled from their collection for free. Uh, OT has their new layers for, um, hosted in their sign player. Uh, so you can see there were a couple of crashes um, during this, and that's basically the player kind of working, working out and 
doing all its things. There's an update coming very soon that will um, address these issues. Um, and then finally, some uh, lab stuff. So these Spitfire drums and piano. They also have the strings and um, synths and stuff and other, other elements, but I just wanted to stick with only two in this one because I already had the other orchestral elements covered from Project Sam. So that they, they were kind of doing the heavy lifting here, but for the softer section, we used uh, layers for most of it. It's pretty useful. The only thing downside is that they don't have a scripted legato to go between the different chords. Whereas CineOrc from CineSamples, they have this um, scripted legato uh, to take you from one chord to the next, and it sounds very natural. So I, I really like using that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, again, these these uh, libraries are in the description for you to check out. Um, in, in case you're looking for a more detailed guide on some affordable libraries, maybe some more expensive libraries that you might want to invest in in the future, I actually have a guide dedicated to that specifically. So uh, click the link in the description below. It'll take you over to that um, sample libraries guide, and you can download it for free to look at um, to consider your purchases for the future. But you know, these free libraries will definitely get you some good mileage. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave any comments below. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Have a great day guys. Bye-bye.